Hello again students, welcome to what will be week four of English 101 composition and I'm going to go over a few concepts and this week's work and a few other things. Uh, for starters, uh, your summary analyses, uh, most of you did submit these and overall they were pretty good. Uh, some focus on in some cases more summary than analysis which is kind of normal for this assignment when you're not used to it and a lot of the analysis focused on content what she was writing about the relationship with the mother which is fine but there's a lot of other things you can focus on too like Amy Tan or Kelly Young's style their use of transitions Amy Tan uses quite a lot of time transitions for instance the use of figurative language, metaphors, uh, in Kelly Young's case, symbolism, metaphor, uh, you know, the, the undercurrent is kind of a symbol for her mother's influence, if you will. Once you put that together, there's a literal undercurrent at the beginning, and the undercurrent that rep is, represents her mom and her relationship with her mom, so to speak. So uh, the key with a summary analysis, it's a short assignment, which makes it seem easy at first, but when you think of the precision involved in writing a good summary, it's a little more challenging than you think, because you want to write that summary quickly, uh, succinctly, and get into some good in-depth analysis. So a good writer can do that in probably one solid paragraph of these stories, maybe a little more. So a summary has to be concise, accurate, clear, readable, and complete. So you should be able to read a, a paragraph or two summary of either of these authors and really know what the story's about head to toe. Okay? And, and the reason for that is I want you to think all the time about your audience. Who are you writing for? Assume it's someone other than me and it's your, when you write an essay that it, it is your job to orient them to the subject. So don't write your essay in such a way as we're just jumping into a conversation about something or like a text or an email or this kind of thing so or even like a forum for that matter it's, it's you orient it you know write the king's english make it readable coherent and look at it as your job to orient the reader I and mean, this is essentially what we do in any kind of professional writing you know you always have to consider audience and that kind of thing okay and you also want to understand your purpose, which is to write a summary and analysis, and your writing genre, which is a summary analysis. <laughs> okay, a little redundant there. But, and there are certain things you do to make a good summary analysis. But that said, the other thing I'd like you to focus on going forward, especially with the essays, is <coughs> when you're analyzing the work of these authors, uh, who is their audience? Kelly Young wrote this for her composition professor. It was about uh, an example of something that shaped her into the person she is today. It was published in the MIT magazine Angles, I believe, somewhere around 2011 maybe. And it became good enough to get into that magazine, to be, uh, which is kind of a showcase of student work. Well, by just knowing that publication, you know her readers are going to be her professor or professors and other students, okay? So Amy Tan wrote this for Seventeen magazine in around 1987, I'd say, uh, which was a very focused magazine audience of teenage girls, so, or young women, but say teenage girls more so. And magazines were very prolific then, there was no internet, and they targeted very specific groups and marketed to that end. Uh, publications still do that kind of thing today, but everything's almost everything's electronic and online so uh, but Amy Tan had a very specific audience in mind too now as for genre uh, Amy Tan and Kelly Young's essays could simply be called short narrative short narrative reflection something like that uh, even short story I mean the nonfiction short story Amy Tan's is so short it could be called uh, an anecdote almost she, she does all that in under a page okay so there's your genre and each author's purpose, well, Kelly Young's purpose was to write an essay for a composition class uh, for the specs offered by a professor. And Amy Tans was to write this for a publication called Seventeen Magazine. So that's why she wrote what she wrote, something that teenage girls can identify with. Okay, so 
So those are the things you need to focus on when you write these things to orient your reader. That's, that's really a key skill. I, I emphasize that a lot more in my tech writing class. It gets into a lot longer essay or something. Well, not even essays, really. The students are writing reports and that kind of class and workplace documents. But this is where you learn some of the basics about that. So, and as for your grades, I most, I'd say, I would say, Ron, of the essays I, that did get submitted, I'd say somewhere around 90% man, were in the B or A range, or low A mostly. Um, so remember, a C is average. I know no one likes to get a C, but it, it is an average grade. It's a passable grade. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to sink your whole GPA or anything because you get a C on a small assignment or even an essay necessarily. It depends on how you do in the other work, too. Um, it just means there's room for improvement, uh, and we do have, uh, certainly if you see a lower, you might consider that. There is a good uh, tutoring and writing center on the main campus, and I think there's some of those services on the satellite campuses as well for BCC, main campus being Fall River. Now, a B is above average, okay? Most students fall into, honestly, into the C, B range. Grades are a bit inflated these days. Um, you know, uh, so some students, this assignment in particular, I didn't grade with too heavy a hand, so you had a, most of the range was between B and A minus, a few, few higher than that, and a few, low, a few lower than that. So uh, it's a short, compact assignment. Your midterm and final essays will be more involved, lengthier, and I'll be looking for more things. I'll be more on the prompt. Always pay attention to the prompt. I'll be grading, grading with a little bit heavier a hand. So. Okay, that said, I'm going to move on to something else. We don't have a lot to do this week, but I will give you um, an overview of what we are doing this week. So here you see week three, so we're going to jump right into week four. And without reading all this, your, your basic work is you have a new essay by Bruce Cat and Grant and Lee, a study in contrast questions with it and then you have a forum. Pretty easy week to give you a little breathing room because last week was a little more intense. So here's the essay. Now right away, you know, I mean sometimes the temptation might be just to start reading, but look at the title, Grant and Leah Study in Contrast. General Grant was the union leader in the American Civil War in the 19th century and General Lee was the Confederate leader. So this author is contrasting and comparing them, okay? Now, how does he do that? Well, well wh what's his purpose for doing that? Well, he's an historian and a reporter. If you read his background up top, I'm giving you, the, well, the document's giving you some good information here. It tells you all about Bruce Cat and what he's written, what he's done. He's a reporter, and he was a reporter, and he's also wrote a lot of essays on history and specialized in the Civil War. Okay, so he's got a lot of authority on this. That's why he writes this essay. It's fairly short, but he doesn't rely on a lot of outside sources because he's already got loads of credibility because of his background. This particular essay, if you look at the caption underneath the title, it was written in a chapter of the American Story, a collection of essays by noted historians. So this tells you more about his expertise, but it also tells you uh, what what he does in this. You know, he he uh, compares and contrasts these two characters and shows the significance um, within them. But he also, you know, this also tells you about his audience. Well, who's going to read uh, American Story? I'd say historians, maybe students, professors, uh, also. Uh, antiquarians or history buffs as we call them. People like some people love reading about history or a particular period of history. Some people, you know, you know, read uh, you know, I read a lot about different periods of history depending which one I'm fascinated in. I used to be fascinated with World War II history. Now I my interests go all the way back to the French Revolution and further back <laughs> sometimes, but um, but you know, a lot but in other words, a lot of people might read this, but it is excluded to history. Now, the reason you get this in a class like this is because when you take a history course, you may have to read some history essays. And this is a very focused one. 
Um, so th this would be a perfect essay to read in a Civil War class, for instance, okay? And you see all the paragraphs enumerated and got page numbers and such. Now that said, it also has, uh, let's see, three pages of text and a link at the bottom. And by being, the benefit of reading this is several fold. One is this could show you how to read other history essays in the same genre or in a different genre. You know, even if you're studying engineering or science or medicine, you may be reading historical topics on different medical and scientific innovations or engineering innovations. So it's good to be able to engage with the academic genre of history, okay? So it gives you some sense of that, okay? And it, it's a different kind of writing than we've read so far. And as you'll see, we do read a lot of narratives early on, like Fish Cheeks and uh, The Undercurrent. We'll be doing another one coming up. But you're going to find that, um, you know, we get into different types of essays. We get further in, okay, and into different modalities of writing. This one being comparison and contrast, whereas Kelly Young's was example, and I'd say Amy Tan's was a pure narrative of a sort. So, okay. So this is just a little background on what you're doing. So this, this gives you everything you need to know about it. Your midterm essay um, will be on several options. Um, one of them will be, I believe, Orwell. I think another will be Bruce Catton. And there'll be another one based on some of the essays we'll read before the midterm exam and midterm essays are due. So, okay, so I won't carry on too much longer than that, but I will take a quick look, look at my notes here. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I think I got the, the uh, uh, got to the heart of what I wanted to discuss. So, okay, so I'll see you all online. Feel free to email me if you have any questions about this week or upcoming weeks. And, and 